G'day guys, it's Mark here from North Oz, and in today's video, you've joined me in my 2021 Land Cruiser Prado, but there is a problem with this vehicle. I've said it before, and I'm gonna keep complaining about it, and it's the fact that there's no wireless Apple CarPlay in this vehicle. So I've complained about it before in the past, and a company reached out to me. The company's called One Car Stereo, and they make this AI box light. And what it does is you plug it into the wired socket into your car and your, uh, it connects via Bluetooth to your phone and it gives you Apple CarPlay through wireless. So you don't have to keep plugging in your phone to use the full Apple CarPlay in your car. So uh, for the last few months, I've been giving this a go. I also gave it to my brother to use for a little bit as well. He gave me uh, pros and cons, which just so happened to be the exact same pros and cons that I came up with. So I'm gonna share with you my opinions on a wireless Apple CarPlay device and is it worth the money? So stick around if this is something that you feel like it might uh, solve some of the problems that you've had with having to continually use a wired Apple CarPlay stereo. So stick around, I hope that this one's helpful for you, and if you found yourself here, click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get straight into it. I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of using this device, and then at the end I'm gonna show you how it actually works, and I can show you some of the things I don't like about it actually in action. So if you wanna see how it kinda of looks on the screen and all that sort of stuff, go ahead, uh, skip forward to that part of the video, but for now, let's talk about the pros and cons. Before we start, guys, there is a little bit of a disclaimer, and it's the fact that we're in a rare case where I haven't gone out and purchased this with my own money. Pretty much everything on this vehicle is purchased with my own money. I'm not that big of a YouTuber yet, uh, where I can get stuff for free. There's a very rare case where I did have a company reach out to me because they heard my rant, and they said that uh, we might have a product for you to try. There is absolutely no obligation for me to say anything good or bad about the product, but but I do have a, a code to use so and a, and a link that if you want to buy this, you can. Uh, it's up to you, and I do get a little bit of a kickback from it as well, but that is not in any way influenced the way that I am reviewing this unit. So let's go ahead and start with the pros. The first thing I like about the unit itself is it's very small and the cable's quite short as well, but it's long enough to reach wherever you need it to go. And it just connects up with a USB-C, so you can use any USB-C for it too. It's light, so oh, hence the name light, I suppose. But it's light, so it means that if you wanted to, you could probably put like a little bit of Velcro or something on it and stick it wherever you like. Uh, for me, I place it into the center console and I have the cable just reaching out and uh, going into that uh, wired USB socket. And I'll show you that a little bit later on. Second thing I like about it is the setup. It sets up very easily. I didn't even use the instructions in the end. I just literally just plugged it in, turned on my phone, found it with Bluetooth, fiddled around a little bit, and it was done. So really there's not much to it in terms of the setup. And of course, the third thing that I really like about it is the fact that it does give you wireless Apple CarPlay. I mean, it's the main thing that it's designed for and it does work. Uh, you have to be a little bit patient, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but at the end of the day, it does give you the Apple CarPlay working wirelessly. So it does do its job at the end of the day. Before we get stuck into cons, just so you know, I have reviewed the unit extensively. I've taken on short trips, long trips, camping trips, all sorts of off-road, all sorts of trips. Um, I've also given it to my brother to use for a little bit as well. Didn't tell him any pros or cons that I found with it. I gave it to him, told him to set it up, go through, put it through its paces, live with it day to day, and then tell me what you, he thought of it. And then he also came back with the exact same pros and cons that I had, which is a really good sign. So let's talk about the cons now. So the cons that I found, and also my brother confirmed this as well, was the fact that it does take quite a while to connect up. And I will show you that towards the end, so I won't go through how long it takes and all that sort of stuff. I'll actually show you how it works um, you know, in real time. But yeah, it does take a little while for this thing to get going to actually connect up to your phone. Often by the time I've gotten in the car, turned the car on, gone down the street and around the corner, it's kind of connected up by then. So, you know, it's not instantaneous. It's not as quick as me just using the Bluetooth on my phone and uh, using like the Toyota app where it just connects automatically. It's not as quick as that. So that's the first con and one of the first things that I don't like about this unit. The second thing I don't like about the unit is the fact that it does use a wide cable still. So you kind of still have the same sort of issue where you've got a USB plug going into the, you know, the input in your car and you've still got cable going around your vehicle. So, I mean, it depends on the placement of your USB input. For me, it's actually a really good place because my USB input is really close to my center console, which I'll show you towards the end or I might overlay some video. It's really close to my console, so I can just reach it in there, no issues at all. 
that's not a problem for me. But on my brother's Fortuna, his USB socket is further towards the center console. So either he either has to run the cable down and then tuck it into where the phone socket is and where the phone place kind of lives. Um, he can't really stretch it across and put in center console like me. So unfortunately, what would be really cool is if someone came out with just like a little dongle, like a little USB, a uh, little dongle there, which sent it to either a unit or it, all the unit was just in the, like a little USB dongle just by itself and it could just plug in. That would be ideal. But I mean, obviously with the size of the unit, um, I'm not sure if the technology is there yet, but you know, we still have wires going through the vehicle. One of the biggest gripes that I had and I couldn't quite figure it out was the fact that I couldn't change the volume of my music or on Spotify, anything like that. Once the volume was set, that was it. So I had some issues with that. Um, my brother actually figured it out and if you flick through the modes on your um, steering wheel and come back to uh, the car play, you're able to then use the volume. But yeah, that was just something that I was a little bit shocked about that I couldn't change the volume and it ended up annoying me so much that I had it plugged in for a trip and obviously I'm going between 60k an hour to 100k an hour and once I get up to 100k an hour I was having troubles hearing my podcast so I tried to bump up the sound and I couldn't hear it still and it wouldn't work I at that point didn't know that I could flick through the modes and then the sound would come back um, so yeah, that was something that my brother found out, which was very clever of him, but I just always just put up with the set, the same um, volume level. So just so you guys know that that is a bit of an issue that I encountered and also my brother encountered in his Toyota Fortuna. Now, before you guys get concerned and think, oh, it takes up the only USB socket in your vehicle. No, it doesn't. There is actually a little USB pass through there. So hopefully you guys can see that. And what it does is it means that you can also power your phone while you are on longer trips, because that's obviously a benefit. But to me, it kind of defeats the purpose of having to um, have this in the first place, because then you can just plug your phone straight into the um, into the wired socket to begin with anyway. So uh, one thing I did find as well with this, with that wire, with that um, yeah, that wired pass through socket was that it didn't charge up my phone. It kind of, I'm not sure if it's because of something wrong with the cable or something like that. Um, I haven't asked the people at One Car Stereo about that yet, um, but that was something that maybe there wasn't enough power getting through to that USB um, to be able to pass through into my phone, but I just found that my phone was just chewing through the battery like normal anyway. So yeah, something that I found out there was a little bit funny. So that may be a problem that you run into as well. Now you probably listened to all the cons and like, yep, yeah, nah, this isn't for me. Uh, but bear with me because the, it does still work and it does still allow you to use Apple CarPlay. But I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew and had the full experience of, of my last few months with this device. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to use this now and, and kind of what it looks like on my screen. So um, yeah, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you how it works in real time. And maybe you can see some of the pros and cons for yourself actually using this unit. So here we are in the interior of the Prado 150. And before I turn the vehicle on to show you kind of how it all works, I'll just show you how it's set up. So you can see here, I've got my wired point here. That's where the wired Apple CarPlay kind of socket goes to. And then in here, I've got my little uh, one car play <laughs> little module thing there the ai box light just sits in there you probably can't see anything in there and that's okay that's fine so by the time i pull my center console over you can't actually see any of the wires so it's a pretty clean little setup so i'm going to go ahead and click the start button for the vehicle and then i'll show you how long it takes we'll find that'll probably take a couple of minutes so let's do that now hit the start button i might fast forward this but um you know, if you guys want to stick around, we'll see. So that's just a Toyota head unit turning on, which does take a little bit of time as itself, by itself. And then we will see the CarPlay will pop up in a second. It needs to connect and do all sorts of things. So I'll just show you kind of what it kind of does. So it's going to take a little while for the car play to just initialize. Often takes a couple of minutes, like I said, that time to get to the main road. I haven't actually timed it. So a little Apple CarPlay button has popped up there. And that does pop up for me quite a bit, the little disconnected, but it um, normally finds its feet in a little bit. So it's connecting. 
and I normally find that it connects and then kind of disconnects and then connects and does that for a little bit and then it will show up with the full Apple CarPlay suite, I guess you could call it. So still thinking, we're a bit over a minute now into it. So if you get a bit impatient, you click the back button and you go to your Apple CarPlay, it'll still send you back to the connecting to phone screen. So it's got a little bit more thinking to do. All right, and there we go. So the CarPlay is now able to be fully utilized. And yeah, so you can see here that, you know, it shows up with your Spotify and some of the places that you've been before as well, which I'll probably try to blur those out because I probably don't want you guys uh, to, you know, see all the places I've been. But, um, you know, and you can go and check out all of your apps as well. So you can bring up the apps here. And I find that it's pretty cool because it like, makes it pretty responsive. Uh, you know, you can flick through your apps that way. Like, you know, it's kind of like an aftermarket head unit, really. Uh, but at the end of the day, it just activates your Apple CarPlay. Uh, so, yeah, you can listen to, you know, audiobooks and whatever. Um, you know, I've got Audible on here too. Um, I haven't had much luck with the Guy GPS. I need to work a little bit more on that. But that's just the Apple CarPlay itself. Nothing to do with the module or the head, head unit itself. Uh, and then you've got the Spotify and stuff like that, which is what I use mostly. So, so you guys can kind of see now kind of how it looks in the real world you know you can see your maps pop up here when you select a destination to go to it's pretty user friendly just like normal apple um, carplay is there is something that pops up which is quite interesting so let me show you that you see this here so this thing can actually be moved around that there and if you click on that and that kind of gives you a little bit of the functions to actually use some of the specific stuff that actually comes with the module itself. So you can use things like Netflix. It actually has its own apps as well. So you can use Netflix and YouTube and stuff. I haven't tried it yet. Um, I'm sure it works. Um, I guess there's no reason why it wouldn't. Uh, but you know, you guys would have to test that out yourself. I'm not watching YouTube or Netflix while I'm driving anyway. Um, so I just use the normal Apple CarPlay suite. But there are options on here for you guys to use the um, specific apps that come with the device that come preloaded onto the device. Just so you guys know, that is a um, thing that it comes with a couple of different things on there. So um, then you can just get out of it, go into the normal CarPlay. <clears throat> and yeah, oh, let's see if it's finished thinking. There we go. So it does a little bit of thinking sometimes. Um, and there you go, back to the normal screen. So I'll flip the camera around and we'll have a little bit of a debrief before I finish off the video. Well guys, that's it. I've talked about the pros and cons. I've shown you how it works. It's up to you whether or not you think it's worth it. Uh, if you feel like you do wanna go out and purchase this device, uh, I do have a link in the description. So if you use that, I do get a little bit of money. I can put that back into the channel, buy things like cameras and stuff to keep the channel going. First time I've ever done something like that. But in my opinion, in summary, listen, day to day, I think it's pretty good because it means I can navigate using my maps and stuff like that, which I can't do using the Toyota app. So I think day to day, it's good for the navigations and stuff like that. Uh, but on longer trips, for me personally, because of the good placement of the wired uh, USB CarPlay port, um, I can just plug in my phone and chuck it in the center console. So for longer trips, I'm not going to be using this device, but on shorter trips, just leaving it plugged in day to day, I would. And that's my opinion. Uh, you know, it's up to you guys whether or not you feel like something like this is for you using the AI Box Lite. If that's something that you feel like would be worthwhile to you, only you can answer that. I mean, I complained about the fact that these vehicles, and I've said it many times, that these vehicles have little things wrong with them that just kind of bother me on a day-to-day -day basis. One of them is like the seats, for example. I don't really like the seats on the Prado and uh, you guys as well ha have agreed, you know, with me. And another thing, you know, that I haven't liked is the fact that there's no wireless CarPlay. I just don't understand why it isn't included in vehicles. So this is a solution. You know, this is a, a company going out of its way to make a solution to a problem. And, and I appreciate that. And I think that, uh, you know, day to day, this is something that I'm gonna use. So uh, thank you, One Car Stereo, for sending that out. That's something I didn't even know existed until you 
uh, told me about it. So uh, yeah, so hopefully this is something that you guys might want to incorporate in your day-to-day -day life and hopefully it you know kind of makes your um, ownership of the vehicle uh, a little bit more enjoyable. So I'll leave it there, guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will see you down in the comments because I'm always enjoying those chats. That's, um, that's a highlight of making these videos, actually getting to talk to you guys. So I'll see you guys very shortly in the next video.